first will of was Microsoft Access, but it broke my heart mostly because of its father, who is a megalomaniac who controlled my life and somehow still does. So, but I'm over it. The second, the second part is that I really like things in order. Um, uh, oh, sorry, just feedback. Okay, so the second part about me is I really like things orderly, like really orderly in data, and that helps me see it and understand it in a way that, that is important to me. And I run a company, and uh, it's okay if you uh, pet me, but don't pet the rest of the staff. They don't like that, especially Ryan, who <laughs> works from home, and yeah. Most of our work is in cultural institutions, specifically libraries, um, museums, and that like. Um, in the, in the uh, library and public library world, a lot of the work that we do is search and discovery. Um, and essentially, this is what we are doing differently. And a lot of, uh, for the most part, thanks to this person, um, Henrietta Averam basically created the MARC record, which became the base of a lot of the library's um, data that exists. Some of the work that we've done for larger institutions, um, this is for uh, Mount Vernon, George Washington's public library. It's about maps and like investigating and playing around with maps. We do a lot of work understanding data and then communicating it by interfaces. And the Walters in Baltimore, Maryland, and these are about manuscripts from the seventh century to the uh, 20th century and a kids' library website um, for Milwaukee Public Library. And one of the big projects that we're working on, because library websites are so expensive, is an open source library system that we have a hosted version and an open source so that somebody can set up their own library website for really cheap. Um, and it is basically uh, what we're going to be talking about a bit, but the, the idea here being that it's uh, um, like WordPress, but it has a lot of very specific features for public library. So, when we talk about data, the principles that I tend to follow are kind of your standard principles. Um, and obviously, you've seen all of these, or you have your own version of these. Um, and I, I'm really excited as I get kind of older and understanding data better to know and have more principles behind every part of the collection of it and managing of it. So we have our own, I have my own, uh, data archive rules. And the first thing is it needs to be able to be living forever. It needs to be absolutely archival. I don't know if any of you remember Flash. And our friend Homestar Runner, who you can't find really, at least the way that you used to. Um, this is an easy example of a binary file gone bad because the company didn't want to continue working on it, and it was so much problems. I loved Flash. Anyways, so the second rule is that data, a, a good data archive to me should be one file. And I'm not talking about big data. I'm talking about small amounts of data compared to a lot of the things, the gigabytes that you're used to working with. Um, too many files is just too many. You can't get through them to parse them, to understand them. Um, third is that Personally, I like to see really clear and easy IDs or slugs. And the IDs, if they're like for blog authors or administrators, they should really be like starting with one, two, three, four, so that later on, I'm looking at some third relationship deep, and I'm like, oh, who is that? Oh, that's Michael. OK, cool. Uh, if you need used hash IDs to make sure that people can't see what your IDs are, um, we do that a lot. It's too much is just too much. Uh, we don't like duplication of data, but we don't mind denormalization of data, meaning if there's like some information attached to something else for speed, sure, but the repeating and repeating and repeating, it's kind of problematic. Um, data archives should support comments and directives. 
comments are pretty straightforward. You need to explain. Uh, sometimes the directives are you're telling maybe an importer how you might want to do it or you might want to do it another way. So lastly, it needs to be grokkable. In case you don't know what grokkable is, I looked it up for you. It actually is, <laughs> it actually is uh, from a Robert Heinlein book, Stranger in a Strange Land, from what, the 60s? And it's the, the Martian language. It means to drink. And it also means to understand. Um, there are a couple of other words, but it really just means to get. And I want to be able to get the data. So remember, we were talking about this library website builder, we want to be able to um, take a pretty standard database and export it so that you can move it to another site. We have a hosted version. We're going to be having the open source version. We want you to be able to just go back in between those two. Well, when you export it, um, we can't just take the standard MySQL export or any standard dump because that's going to include everybody's data. It'll include the IDs that are really big from the hosted version. And when you try to import somebody else's data into the hosted side, well, it's all falling apart. So we need a better system. So what could we use? This is the range. MySQL dump, of course, is got all kinds of issues. The biggest ones are, it is, by the way, one file. It is relational, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, <laughs> It is potentially archivable. It should be enough to be able to bring it back. But when you go from an older version uh, of a backup to a new, you really have to recreate the old version. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have clear IDs. Um, comments and directions are great. Are you going to get it? I'm just looking at it a little bit. So what's this? Exactly. Well, let's look at our rubric. Is it one file? No, you'd have to have many files. Is it relational? You can build a relationship, but not by definition. Um, or if you do, it starts becoming like very long rows where you repeat things, which is problematic. No necessarily clear IDs, but maybe that's OK. Um, either way, you can definitely grok it. That is a very cool thing about it. And comments, not so much. But grokking, totally worthwhile. And this? Uh huh. And so this is an easy example of one of the ways that you can store relationships. This is essentially uh, companies and then the address. And the address is, of course, twice. And that breaks the rule of we really don't want to have recreated data. So of course, it's one file, or it can be one file. The relationships are repeated over and over again. Um, are they archivable? Of course. The IDs themselves are going to probably be nodes or attached to the node. Uh, no comments. I don't know who created that. And I know there's like JSON LD, and it's not really supported enough. And it can be grokkable. This one is. But it becomes really hard to. So anybody know this one? Uh-huh. Anybody happen to know this exact format? I work deep in this one. It's TEI. Uh, uh, archive format, OK. Um, mm -hmm, exactly. Um, and the good thing is, you can kind of read it. You get all these like identifiers. HTML is an XML format, basically, uh, except for now you can allow breaks without the slash tag, but whatever. Um, the repeating is, again, going to be a thing. And we found that to be a really problematic thing. When we did the Walters archive, you would have, for example, a set of tags. And all of those tags would be cool for the one uh, set of rows, but the next set of rows, somebody would put a white space in. And now you have two tags where there were one. And then you have to start rethinking some things. Something's capitalized. There's no accountability there, basically. Um, it does allow comments. It's node-based. Um, and it's kind of grokkable, but it becomes super painful. Anybody know this? And specifically, what's on the top? Uh, it's front matter. And I don't know, you've probably seen this in your side of the world. But 
Front matter is the way that you can put data inside of the individual markdown files and you can do the same kind of thing where you have tags, you have authors, you have all the matter that you want. So looking at that, uh, we have one file. No, it's a whole bunch of files. Um, the relational uh, repeats, um, definitely archivable. Uh, it is a kind of a new so-called good librarianship standard. Uh, because you can post it all to something like GitHub and the, all the files are there. Um, comments are definitely built in. Rockable, because there's so many files, not so much. Uh, ex oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, did anybody see the Grist uh, talk yesterday? Um, and I really am excited to see the product. Um, but essentially, they, their import-export system is this. This is definitely not, um, not going to work in the future. The version that you happen to be on, you might have to recreate an entire environment. I've heard hours and hours of librarians talking about trying to create environments and still not getting Homestar Runner to work. So SQLite does everything except for archivable, and it's not definitely grokkable what's going on in there. Last one, bonus. Anybody know what this is? It, it's on the Voyager and it flew past uh, Pluto. Um, it was the, uh, the Voyager messages on a phonograph record, a 12 inch copper disc that's gold plated. And it has, as you can see, the sounds of Earth. Um, and it's really to show the sounds and apparently pictures of uh, the diversity of life. Well, one file it is. It's probably relational, or at least it's widely connected. Uh, archivable, it's made out of copper and gold plated. It's been <laughs> shot into space. It has been made to be archived. In fact, they designed it in a way so that aliens who don't have a record player could guess at how to make a record player just to make the thing play. Comments and directives? Yeah, it did. Right, on the, right down there, Sounds of Earth, and on the other side. Um, grokkable? Absolutely. It's the diversity of life, life on Earth. Well, what other formats are there? And please ask them, tell me all about them in the questions in the minute. So, let's create a new standard. Roger that. So maybe it's a bad idea, but let's do it anyway. So G, <laughs> GCSV, Group CSV, uh, Gecko CSV. Uh, we haven't figured out what the G stands for yet. Exactly. So um, we want to basically save only the, the specific website data. Um, we want to be able to uh, renumber all the IDs, because I like things nice and orderly. I want to be able to have relationships in the table. I want to be able to use the relationships that are built into the CSV that are immediately forgotten, because they're going to all be renumbered. Uh, and I'd like to be able to have directives and potentially skipping, which is essentially a directive. So first, can we do multiple CSVs in one file? Well, yes, we can. We can name them right at the beginning with a directive begin table. And then we have here book list books along with book list because the book list probably has multiple books. These IDs are going to end up being renumbered because at the top it will start explaining that. Uh, the directives tell us what to do. If your interpreter of this data doesn't have the directive, it just skips it so you can have specialized things like IDs to remember or to use in somewhere else. Uh, multiple relationships, no problem. Associative relationships, looks just like what you would think. Uh, specialized directives, like being able to become the root site ID or other things that become interesting. Again, if it doesn't know, it just forgets it. Um, is Get that part real quick. Uh, actually, how many minutes do I have? Okay. So that was one problem, a website uh, builder and content management. Another problem is 
another open source product that we have in, in the wild, but we built it on Directus, and it essentially allows librarians to capture aha moments and to be able to share them with stakeholders and do really cool things with them. But again, we want to be able to take that data and export it, but we are using Directus because it was a really great, simple, open source tool to build the administration interface on. The only way Directus backs up everything, my SQL dump or a series of SQLs. So if we had a standard, Directus might pick it up and then we can take that, download that, upload it into Grist and suddenly everything starts working cohesively. So that is it. How would you solve it? Question. Yeah. Please. <laughs> if anybody can solve it, please come up here. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave it to you. So again, librarian, I, I guess I'm just curious what communication you've had with other librarians about this problem, because I hear this problem all of the time when we talk about archiving research data, some of which is relational and the conversation of, you know, how do we balance representing a research data set in its original format versus making sure that it is usable in the long term. And I have certainly not heard anybody answer this question, um, but I'm just wondering if that's a, a community you've interacted with and if that's been productive in any way. You're clearly familiar with libraries. I might know a thing or two. Um, the answer is, so far, we, we've seen with the second project, with the library project, um, they get the problem, but nobody has an answer. And so at this point, I would have to have a plugin to build to export that data. Um, and that's probably what we're going to have to do. Uh, library, and so far, the ones that we work with, do you know Code for Lib? Um, that would probably be the place that I would maybe show some of this to next, or do a presentation maybe at their next year. Um, I don't know how well it's going to be used because I'm just introducing it today. Um, I, 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 <laughs> so the question was, do you, I know RDAP? And the answer is not yet. <laughs> what other questions? This was really fun. Um, thank you. Uh, I. I also struggle with this, like the, the, some of these questions. And I always, this is, I always like, I love, like CSVs are easy to use. They're, they feel way more accessible than basically any other format for easy sharing with many different people of many different skill sets. But the like, the relationship and the schema that is built in to most SQL databases is so helpful. And I, I don't know if this is possible, I literally have no idea, but I feel, like, I feel like being able to say like, this is the schema and here are the CSVs would not solve your one file problem, but like would, would solve some, some of these problems. I don't know, is that something that you've considered that like using the schema of a database, but the not actually storing the data there? Yes, and one of the ideas with directives is I wanted it to also be a bit schema free because in a lot of cases, nobody really cares if it's a Vericare 255 or a Vericare 10. You could look at that and figure it out. Um, and in the end, you may have a different use for it. So I didn't include schema as the first thing. However, directives are where this is meant. You could essentially name every field and give a schema that you feel is super important because you know what's gonna happen when they use the data. So let's. <laughs> so yeah, and, and again, the, the top things here could be the way to essentially start defining fields. Um, and obviously, the, or not obviously, but the first um, list of the CSV is the field names. And it has no meta information. And I use comments within fields all the time. So it doesn't include that. So up there would be a great place for it. Kind of question, but kind of, there's this um, old tool called, it's like Koopy, like copy with a, two O's. It's kind of like what you're looking for, or the beginning of it. 
I was just, that's why I was texting real quick, because um, you know DAF is for comparing different tables. It's a tool that's used for merging and comparing tables, written by Paul Fitzpatrick. So he also wrote Koopy. This is the reason I was texting him, because he's our CTO. <laughs> so that's why I was like, wait a minute. Because he's had a similar idea. Maybe I should put you guys in touch. But I wanted to know if um, you've looked at anything like DAF or something like Koopy for kind of this idea of like uh, merging and aligning different tables. I think Koopy, it's like CSV, but also other file formats as well. Um, yeah, so it's like, it's not really a question, which is going to come in at the end, it's more like a resource, because I feel like you're onto something, like I like this approach, and like maybe we could do something, because like there's been some thinking about something like this. Um, so yeah, so we're kind of hijacking, but just like definitely I think this is a good like, direction. Yeah. So plug for Grist. And, <laughs> and. Um, and yeah, definitely, I, no, I don't know them. And, and standing here was my hope to learn everything, steal it all from you. <laughs>